Welcome to the Dairy News and Views podcast, a production of the Iowa State University Extension and Outreach Dairy Team. Our podcast covers current educational, research, and industry tools available for your operation to manage healthy cows and calves while producing the highest quality dairy products. Thanks for joining us today on Dairy News and Views from the ISU Dairy Team. I'm Jen Bentley, Northeast Iowa Dairy Field Specialist, and I'm here today with Fred Hall, our Northwest Iowa Dairy Field Specialist. Welcome back to the podcast, Fred. Always a pleasure to uh, sit down and visit about uh, cow things, you know? Yep, that's right. And today we're going to be visiting with our Northeast Iowa Ag Engineer, Brian Doherty, as we talk about how we can utilize time-lapse cameras in our freestyle barns, in our feeding area, to kind of help better manage our cows. And I think it's a really interesting technology as we take a look at ways that we can capture video and be able to make management decisions based off of that. So welcome back to the podcast, Brian. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's uh, great to be back on the podcast again. Well, before we get started diving into time-lapse cameras and how they work inside barns, can you give us a little bit more detail on how a time-lapse camera works? Sure. So basically what a time-lapse camera is, it's just, it's sort of like a regular camera, but you can set it so that it will take a photo at a preset interval. And so some of the original time-lapse cameras that came on the market, you could set them up and they would take a picture every so often, but then you had to have separate software that would then take those photos and stitch them together to create a video. But the the newer cameras on the market now just automatically do that for you. So they'll take a picture at a preset interval and then just automatically create a video for you. So basically what this allows you to do is to watch hours or even many days of footage in in a matter of minutes. It can be a very efficient way to monitor what's happening. There's some different settings in these cameras that kind of allow you to adjust them and how you capture footage. The frame rate, for example, is just how many photos per second will play back when you're watching the video back. And then the capture interval is the other important one. That's how often that camera will take a picture. And you can adjust these depending on what it is you're using that camera for. So for example, if you just want to monitor a cow in the barn, be able to track that cow around the facility and see what she's doing, you're going to want a fairly short capture interval. So maybe five to 15 seconds or if you just want to monitor like a feed bunk and see you know do the cows have feed or not is it being pushed up often enough you know more 20 to 60 second capture interval would probably be fine for that type of use or if you just want to see you know how many cows are in stalls things like that one of the downsides with the time lapse it, it does not provide a live feed so it's not like a regular video camera where you can turn on your laptop and watch it in real time it doesn't do that but it does capture you know what's happening over a longer period of time which you can then watch back later to see what's going on when there's not necessarily anybody watching Brian so there is a difference between using a trail cam versus uh, a time lapse camera, right? Because I know my husband is a hunter and uses a trail cam. So that's a live feed versus time lapses that recorded, correct? Yeah. So if it's a live feed, that would be a different type of a camera. So a lot of dairy facilities will have, you know, video monitoring systems where you can watch what's happening in real time. That that's that's a different type of technology than the yeah. time lapse cameras. Okay. Is that something we'd use like in the maternity barn? For a maternity pen, you're probably going to want a live feed. You know, you, you want to be able to see what's happening with that cow in real time and if she needs assistance or not. But if you just want to monitor, say, your your maternity pens over time and see, do those cows have enough space? Are they being bedded often enough? You know, th- things like that. Are, are they able to reach their feed? That, that type of thing you could do with the time time-lapse camera, but you, you wouldn't use it for actually monitoring calving. Brian, what are some of the other common uses for time-lapse technology in a dairy facility? Yeah, so we've sort of talked about a few of them already. Kind of the initial use for these was what we would call feed bunk studies. So monitoring your feed bunk to see, you know, is is fresh feed being delivered often enough? Are the cows able to reach the feed? Is it being pushed up often enough? You know, do you have enough bunk space? You know, is there they're crowding around the bunk? Is there cows bullying other cows? Things like that you, you could pick up with, with this time lapse that you might not see if you're just 
walking through the barn or you're only seeing what's happening when you're feeding. So that's a, a common use. Another one is evaluating stall usage. So you can look at how the cows are using the stalls. Are, are they laying in the stalls comfortably? Do they have enough bedding? Are they avoiding stalls? Are they perching? You know, is, is there a lack of resting time? Is the barn too crowded? Those are all things you can evaluate with time lapse technology for for your stalls other common uses uh just looking at cow flow you know around say robotic milkers you know are cows waiting too long are, are there some traffic flow issues where you know cows are, are being bullied or your gates aren't in the right place maybe your waters are, are big enough things like that you can kind of look at just general flow and you know how, how the cows are moving through the barn and then you can also look at just management activities you know are, are the stalls being bedded often enough are your scrapers running at, at, at the proper times that you've got set you know different things like that, that you can also evaluate with time lapse yeah those are a lot of good uses for the time lapse camera brian and and you had just presented on our webinar here a couple of weeks ago the precision technology webinar on time lapse cameras and had quite a bit of footage on some of these examples you and Dan McFarland did. And it's just really neat to see some of that that footage. And when you are in the barn every day, you may not notice that, but when you look at that time lapse over time, uh, it's just really interesting how you can pick up those little things. So other than common uses for the cameras, have you come across any other situations where time lapse cameras can be useful that people might have might not have thought of already yeah so you mentioned the webinar and uh, dan mcfarland had a great example of that where they've been using time-lapse camera out in pennsylvania to monitor how cows react to heat stress so that that could be potentially a great use for this so what parts of the barn are the cows crowding into and then trying to figure out what might be causing that is it you know an issue with lighting is it an airflow issue you know those are some, some potentially unique uses for the time-lapse footage. Another one is uh, monitoring calf barns. You know, you might not automatically think of that as a use for time-lapse, but you can look at calf behavior if you've got some group pins, you know, how calves are using automatic calf feeders. And then one that came out of the camera work that I did installing cameras in different barns was uh, seeing if your lighting system is working properly. Several of the barns that I put cameras in, you know, they're watching the footage back and actually realize that their uh, extended day lighting system, you know, either the timers were off or they didn't change them when daylight savings happened, things like that. They weren't turn it on, turn it off when they were supposed to be. So just things like that, that you wouldn't necessarily catch, you know, if there's nobody in the barn. And then uh, kind of a unique one, uh, one of the producers I'd worked with actually wanted to capture some video for putting something on social media. So this another potential option if you want to do some kind of farm promotional activities, make some short little videos to capture the public's attention. That's something else you could do with the time-lapse camera as well. Okay, Brian, how much do some of these cameras cost and where do you go to to find them? Yeah, that's a great question. So one of the nice things about time lapse is they're relatively inexpensive. You know, if you want to put in a video monitoring system, you know, they can be several hundred to several thousand dollars for that kind of technology. These time lapse cameras are, are pretty affordable. So it's anywhere from a hundred to four hundred dollars, depending on the camera you buy and the accessories you get with it, would get you pretty much everything you need. So the cameras that we've been using on the dairy team, they're about two hundred dollars, and that that comes with a a mounting kit and a protective cover so it's got everything you need you know there's several different companies that make these time lapse cameras uh breno is the one that we happen to use but there, there are other companies out there as well so if you want to find these i would just do a web search for time lapse camera and you'll you'll find plenty of options that are available for purchase and Brian, you mentioned the Extension Dairy Team has uh, some time-lapse cameras, and you've been putting them into barns here in Iowa over the last year. So do you have any tips or tricks for people to consider if they you know, want to purchase one of these cameras? Yeah, so this has definitely been a learning experience, you know, for us as well. We these are it's kind of a new thing for the dairy team. So some of the things that I've learned, you know, one, if you're going to buy a camera, you're definitely going to need some type of a wall mounting bracket 
or a tripod or some way to, to mount that camera. That's generally an accessory that you're going to have to buy. And then I mentioned the weatherproof cover. You're absolutely going to want one of those if you're going to install this in any kind of dairy facility just to protect that camera from dust and moisture so it doesn't get damaged. Cameras generally are going to have some type of memory storage in them, just a regular memory card. So you're going to want a, probably at least a 16 gigabyte memory card because these files can get quite large, especially if you're capturing several days of footage. And then there's different settings in the camera. So the timestamp feature is a really important one. So when you get that camera, you're going to want to turn on that time, set, set the clock to the correct date and time and then turn on that timestamp feature. And what that will do is when you're watching the video back, it will tell you the exact date and time when that footage was taken. So you might see something happen and you want to know, okay, what day did that happen? What time did that happen? You, you won't have that functionality if you don't turn on the timestamp. And then nighttime lighting is another feature. Some of these cameras can work pretty pretty well at night. You do have to have a little bit of light to get them to work, but just make sure you turn on the functionality in that camera so they can capture footage at night. When you mount them, it's a good idea to just try to keep them away from, you know, large fans in particular. I put one in one barn and it was next to a big tunnel ventilation fan. And that was actually causing the whole wall to vibrate a little bit and that'll that can distort your footage extremely dusty areas could potentially cover your lens over time so try to avoid that and then during the winter time if you've got extremely cold air coming in and hitting some warmer air you probably want to keep your camera away from those areas just so you don't get condensation on the on the lens cover and then the last issue i would mention that i've had is uh, the batteries going dead i had that happen several times installing these so if you're going to put a camera in I'd say longer than a week or so. It's probably a good idea to just go ahead and put new batteries in it so you don't have it die on you halfway in between. And then once you've got the footage, there's different ways to watch that footage back. So you could just play it on your laptop with the regular you know, Windows media player or a Mac video player. So that's one option. But uh, some of these cameras will also come with free software that you can use for watching that footage back and it's just at least with the Breno camera it's just a much better viewing experience because you can do things with that that you can't do with your regular laptop it's a lot easier to speed the footage up or slow it down you can you know clip out certain parts if you want to make a shorter video you can zoom in on the footage with that which you can't do with your regular you know just laptop viewer so that's a feature that I would look for if you're going to buy a camera find one that's got some uh, uh, video player software that comes with it. What are some of the other challenges you've encountered? You'd mentioned about not installing them next to a large fan. What else is out there that we need to be looking out for? Yeah, I mentioned the, the nighttime settings in the camera. So one of the big challenges I've found is, you know, if you are trying to capture footage at night, you know, especially if you want to monitor the feed bunk or you want to see what's happening with stall usage when nobody's around, capturing nighttime footage can be quite a challenge. You do need some light. You don't need a lot, but you need a little bit of light. It's got to be somewhat evenly distributed throughout the barn to be able to see what's happening at night. So if you've got an extended day lighting system and that turns off and there's no lights in the barn, you're, you're basically going to have a black screen. You won't be able to see anything at night. So you have to have a little bit of light and you, there can be some issues with shadows, you know, maybe in certain places where you won't be able to see. Or sometimes during the day, if you've got the sun shining in the barn, you know, you might have some glare so what you probably have to do is just put the camera in for a few days and then just take it down check the footage and see if see if you're able to still see everything you need to and make adjustments there and the other thing is that sometimes it can just be hard to find a good place to mount the camera to capture the angle you need so you might have to play around a little bit try some different locations until you get the footage that that you need yeah brian's good points and definitely some as with any new technology, some trial and error just to find where good places to mount those would be good. As you've kind of experienced the time-lapse cameras and kind of implemented them in different facilities now, what do you think is the biggest overall benefit to dairy producers uh, using those time-lapse cameras? Yeah, that's a great question. And to me, what that comes down to is this time lapse. It's just a great way to 
you know, identify opportunities, you know, one to improve your management in the facility and the other is possibly some facility design changes that you can make. And the key with the time lapse is you can pick up things that quite often go unidentified. So you might not even realize it's happening because, you know, there's just, it's impossible to have somebody in the barn 24 seven watching what's going on. So, and even with the live video feeds, you, you don't have somebody sitting there watching that video feed all day. So that's the beauty of time lapse. It allows you to have eyes in the barn when you otherwise wouldn't. And it's, it's just a very inexpensive technology that can really help improve profitability in the end. Are there any resources where dairymen can find out more about using time-lapse cameras? Yeah, so we mentioned the webinar earlier and that uh, has been recorded and we'll be posting that. So that was uh, part of our Dairy Precision Technology webinar series. So the first webinar was on using time-lapse cameras. Some great information there, again, from Dan McFarland from Penn State University on a lot of detail on how you can evaluate stall usage and things like that, some different metrics you can look at. So I really encourage people, once we get that webinar up, that'll be... You'll be able to find that from the ISU Extension Dairy Team website. So I'd encourage you to check out that webinar. We also are going to have a fact sheet coming out here very shortly to go along with that. And then I've also submitted an article to Hordes Dairyman. It hasn't come out yet, but keep an eye out for that. There will be an article coming in Hordes Dairyman on using these time-lapse cameras in dairy facilities. And Brian, if producers are interested in just kind of trying it out, uh, I know you've been working with some producers in the area. Can they call you and ask for some help or assistance with that as well? Absolutely. Yeah. So we've, you know, I have a camera and then we have another camera that's shared amongst the dairy team. So yeah, I, you can uh, find my information. Uh, if you just go to Google ISU extension, uh, put in my name, Brian Doherty, you know, ag engineer, you should be able to find my contact information that way. So happy to help if anybody's interested in trying out a camera. Well, thanks, Brian, for being on the podcast here today. Um, always a good information that you bring to our podcast. I know we've had you on the podcast for ventilation and heat abatement, which we'll probably be talking about here in the next couple of weeks too. So always just a lot of good information when we were talking about barn and facility management. So appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thanks for joining us today and look forward to visiting with you on the next Dairy News and views from ISU. This institution is an equal opportunity provider. For the full non-discrimination statement or combination inquiries, go to www.extension.iastate.edu backslash diversity backslash ext.